Hello everyone, I wanted to show you my Honda Pacific Coast and what I've done to it so that uh, you can get a good idea of what it's like now. This is a 1989 Pacific Coast. I've had it for a number of years now. The odometer says 60,817 miles. All that works just fine. <clears throat> I've also actually replaced all the lights in here and all these indicator lights with LEDs. So no more burned out bulbs ever. <clears throat> Over on this side of the dash you can see I have a Honda Marine uh, analog voltmeter. This here also is an idiot light <clears throat> that changes colors based upon the voltage to make me pay attention to this. <clears throat> Moving back a little bit you can see this right here which turns on and off the headlight in case you're having charging issues for some reason. Over here, you can see a little bit of what makes this specific Pacific Coast very special. I have an air fuel ratio gauge and some indicator lights. You might wonder why I have that. Well, that's because this bike, as you might have noticed here, doesn't have a, a carb choke because there are no carbs. I have completely replaced the fuel delivery system with a fuel injection system that I built myself around a micro squirt ECU and a set of Pacific Coast carbs I turned into throttle bodies with integrated injectors. I have been tuning the bike for quite a while now. It has a decent tune. You can always do more though, of course. Moving over to the front, I recently just replaced the bulb in here with a an LED bulb instead of the original uh, H4 incandescent and actually in between I'd had a uh, HID so now there's an LED bulb in there. You could probably use a little bit of alignment still but it works pretty well. <clears throat> you might also notice down here that I have um, steel braided lines for the brake system on the bike. I also have a steel braided clutch line. <clears throat> and um, hard to see but here's the stock horn and down here Let's see if we can see it. Maybe not. Mm, well, let's just say it's back up in there is a um, a hella horn, basically. It's a, a high high volume air horn that sounds the same time you honk the normal horn. Uh, you also may have noticed that I have Miko pegs installed. These things are great on really long distance rides. Uh, sometimes I forget to put them up in curves, which is why they're a little scraped up there. I also see a little bit of road rash from previous owners from the bike being dropped before. <clears throat> Moving back here, you can see there's a little bit of disturbance in the plastic. You might ask, what's that? Well, that's actually the fuel pump. This is off of a Honda VT1100 Fury motorcycle as are the injectors in the bike. So rather than having the little stock fuel pump, this is a high pressure fuel pump to run the fuel injection system. Moving underneath here, you can see I do not currently have installed the um, fake muffler that would normally sit here. Uh, I just don't have it on. You could put it on if you want. I have it in part somewhere in my stuff. But back here a little bit further, you see this. This is actually a VT1100 final drive assembly which makes you have taller gearing so that you cruise along at freeway speed at slightly lower RPM. You can see I have Metzler tires on this. Plenty of tread. Uh, if you can see that. Yeah. I really like Metzlers especially for the rain. I know some people don't as much but I really do. Um, the last time I changed these tires a couple years ago I also installed new valve stems front and rear. They're genuine Honda line valve stems. One thing I did forget about the front as well is that there is a custom spring pack inside the um, forks that give it uh, the equivalent of progressive shocks. Uh, on the front here you can see I have a clear view windshield with the, the uh, Goldwing style vent. This I believe is a plus four. I traded a guy a while back for this because before I had more like a plus two and I wanted a taller one. It's in pretty good shape, uh, no real problems. Uh, all of the turn signals, all the external lights on the bike 
have all been converted to LED, which also, for power savings, meant I gave up the self-canceling turn signals. So I rewired the bike so it no longer has self-canceling turn signals. Instead, there is a um, series of relays that takes its place, so you have to cancel it yourself. You also might note I have a little bit of plastic damage here. I do actually have the parts to um, put back into this that are stored in the trunk. Same with the little bit of plastic damage that I have here. Uh, no big deal if someone did want to repair it, but I just never got around to it, never thought it was important to me personally. You also can see here on the dash and over here that there's a little bit of bubbling that is very typical of these 1989 bikes because the original stock windshield would actually cause a lens effect and it's kind of like using a magnifying glass in the sun and would burn the bike. Uh, no big deal for me though and actually before I installed this I, I actually had a cup holder shoved in here to be able to have, have drinks along on the road. Um, another thing to note here is that I have the Genmar handlebar risers. I forget exactly how much rise these give. I think it's like 1.25 inches. If you want to, you can actually rotate the whole assembly forward and back pretty easily as well. Uh, it really helps me because I'm a little bit of a taller rider uh, for long distance cruises. Uh, also here you can see that I've got the um, clutch and brake lines going up that are those uh, braided steel hoses that I had custom made. Moving back a little bit, this is a uh, bead rider beaded seat cover, which is great for those long rides so your butt doesn't get uh, sore from built up sweat. A little further back, you can see I do in fact have the seat rest here. And this here is an M-Moto complete rack. And it is actually, um, these posts here are actually welded onto the subframe in the trunk and then bolted on so you actually drill through for that. This is great and super sturdy, super duper heavy duty. The guy that makes this actually lives in Ukraine. Uh, he can be a little bit hard to deal with for Americans just because it seems oftentimes his email goes to our spam folders rather than um, where you'd expect it to go. Uh, also, uh, he does, last time I talked with him, he was just taking PayPal, which seems sketchy if you're doing, going to Ukraine. But when I bought this about four or five years ago, it showed up in like two weeks, excellent condition, super great craftsmanship, very inexpensive um, I really like it. And it's actually set up with these mounts. You could put a GV top box on it. And it's flipped upside down, but right here is the uh, the latch bit that you'd flip back up here. And the whole thing can then have the locking trunk on it. Which is pretty neat if you want that. I, I usually use it for cart carrying camping gear and whatnot. I can put my tent and my um, sleeping pad down here. And sometimes actually my sleeping bag as well. And then up here, other camping gear. And I do actually have the um, stock grab handles but or sorry the stock grab handles but I took them off because this of course it gets in the way of it but these work pretty well as well and if you were wanting to you can actually you know put a little foam around this or something to make it a little warmer of a grip if your your passenger has cold hands and again all the tail lights back here in turn signals and indicators they're all um, LED I replaced them all several years ago. You can see all that right up on my website. Um, this bike at one point had the funny Honda pinstriping and colors. I left that on there because it's cool. And I think it's kind of a neat little bit of history. Uh, my ADV rider sticker, of course. Old parking permit from a previous owner down there. <clears throat> Moving around the side, you can see some old scratches here from a previous owner dropping it. I think I'm probably the fourth or fifth owner of this particular bike. Um, and also a little bit of scraped up there, no big deal. See a bit of a gap here and here? That's because this whole panel is actually bulging out a little bit because of all the electrical stuff behind it that I installed to make the fuel injection system work. No big deal though, it runs just fine. You don't really notice it when you're on the bike. Uh, speaking of electrical, here I have installed a battery tuner junior harness. And I always leave this on a tender. My batteries last for four or five years normally that way. Again, my Mikopeg. Um, Oh yeah, previous owner installed this and I kept it. A little skull <laughs> um, uh, cap there. So now, let me pull out my keys. Make sure I get the right ones here. That's not it. Where have I put them? Oh, I'll use these for now. So I actually do have two sets of keys. They're in the other ones in my other pocket on the other side. 
This is the original Honda key. Normally I don't use this. Normally I actually use the key that I made a copy off of this so that I preserve the original one. You also might notice this thing in the bottom. That is a marine battery cutoff switch key. Now why do I have that, you might ask. Well, let's see. So, go ahead and open that up. I'm going to put this down for a second. So watch me for a minute. Opening up the trunk now. Now, let me take you to the trunk. And some of you might remember when I installed all this before. This is all my auxiliary um, fuses and whatnot for the bike. Uh, also, this is a switch to be able to reprogram the ECU to the low-level firmware. It's all the grounds for the extra stuff. You can see a little bit of all the wiring peeking out underneath here from everything I've done. Also down there, you might notice I have a heat troller unit, which the controls for that are up here on the front. And they do work quite well, and it has the BMW-style plugs. Really love that on cold days. So back to here. So I have this neat little thing in the trunk, which is a battery cutoff switch. And if you go around to the front here, you can see that I have it installed here. And actually, nothing on the bike will work if it'll focus. Come on, focus. Yeah, sort of focusing. Um, nothing on the bike will work uh, if this is turned off. So. If you were worried about theft of your bike, it's not a bad thing to have. Not very many people are going to think to try to open the trunk on a Pacific Coast and look for this. We insert this. Try to turn the bike on. Come on. A little convincing here. Let's see. Maybe I have the other key so I can actually do this right. Having it uh, in the other pocket. Having the uh, handlebar risers, it's nice to also actually have this other key that's taller. That make me look silly. But anyway, if you do try, oh, it actually is already on. Oh, silly me. So, um, if you do try to turn the bike on from this position, nothing happens. No lights. So let's go back to the trunk here real quick. I'm going to insert this, and turn it on, and suddenly all the bike will work with that. A few other things while we're still back here. Uh, this is the stuff for the new um, LED light bulb I just installed. Um, this is actually all the little plastic bits that have broken off. This is if you ever need to jump start the bike or jump start someone else. I have this bag that comes with it. Uh, that's a tank bag and you can put a small computer in it if you're doing it. ECU tuning. Um, let's see. This is a complete brand new toolkit, never really been used. I have a second toolkit kind of spread out in here. Jumper cables for the bike. Uh, this is the, um, programming cable for the bike. I have it currently plugged in because I've been messing with it a little more. You never get done with that. It's always fun to do. And uh, you just plug that into your laptop and I, I use Tuner Studio to do all that work. So let's see if I can get the bike to fire up this morning. It's a little bit chilly today. It's probably about 30 degrees, maybe 25. Let's see here. If I can figure out how to hold the phone and do everything else. Okay, so I just turned it on see everything fire up so I don't know if you also heard it but the fuel pump when it first turns on actually pressurizes the lines as well and um, let's see so I can stand up so this little blinking light means my battery's low that's because I haven't started it yet and also because the heater is running on the um, wideband uh, oxygen sensor that's part of the ECU system and if I want the headlight on you can see there's nothing now if I do that I flip the switch, the little right, red light comes on, remind me, and you can see it's lit up now. High beam, low beam, etc. Let's see if I can get the bike to start up today. Hey, first try. Come on. It's put putting away here just as it first starts up.
sticks sometimes. I just tap it and it goes. So now it's idling pretty well. You know, this is a pretty cold start for it. I think most people probably wouldn't really be riding a bike like this in this weather, especially when you look outside and there's, you know, ice in my uh, driveway up in my townhouse. So it's warming up now. I'll get off of the bike and uh, walk around. You can see the engine's cold. It wasn't warm at all when I started it. So, yeah, it's running just fine. Runs and drives great, no real problems. You know, again, as I've said a couple times, there's always more tuning to do with an ECU system as cups are made for a bike. But in reality, that's actually pretty fun. If you want to take the time and the money, you can take this to a, an ECU tuner, actually, and get it even better. Uh, but for what I do, it's pretty good. Um, let's see, yeah, turn signals. So you can see blinking in there. And blinking there. There, you can see how crisp that is because they're all LEDs. On the other side, blinking there, blinking there, turn that off. There was the horn, you could hear that second tone cut in as I uh, had the other thing spool up on it. Um, you can see I put these uh, grip puppy things on, these squishy grips. There's actually a throttle lock as well that works just fine. Um, brake lights work. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see in there. That's the front brake. There's the rear brake. Yeah, you can see it's pretty cold. It's still cold. This climate, it takes a while for things to warm up. And uh, I keep up in this little glove box uh, spare um, uh, nipple for the tires. Uh, this is also a, a mouse that I, I don't know, I guess I could take the lead with the bike so you can work on a computer easily while you're riding with gloves on, actually. Although I don't recommend that. Uh, and this is a cigarette uh, lighter plug so you can plug in like your phone to charge or whatever else. I often will do that on long rides. And then you can get call notifications and whatnot if you had like a Bluetooth helmet. Um, yeah. It's a. Uh, no real problems there. And idle's nice, uh, at least at this elevation. You know, when you, when you take this down to sea level, because I'm at 6,000 feet, and then uh, if I were to go down to sea level, I'd probably have to adjust a little bit. Um, under here, you might remember that there is the. Um, the throttle adjust screw thing off for the old carbs. That's actually still there, it still works, so you can tune it up or down a little, depending on your elevation. I have it set a little bit high, maybe even for here, just because that way it warms up faster when it's below freezing. And uh, this indicates that we're still in the warm up enrichment mode. This would indicate if we were doing it in an acceleration mode. Uh, and this you know, shows we're 12.7 stoichiometric ratio coming out the back pipe. Uh, if it was perfect, right on the money, that'd be like 14.7 or 8. But you like it to have a little bit richer like this um, when it's warming up. And, and anyway, we're still in the good zone here with the green. No problem there. And uh, you can see now we're nice and green and happy. Uh, same there. That means this thing, you know, it's running on fuel injection with a fuel injection pump. Uh, and all this other stuff on here. And all the LED lights. And we still have plenty of power. You know, right at 14 volts on that, which is right where you'd expect it to be when charging. So I, I think that's a pretty big success. That was one of the things I was concerned about, actually, is how much uh, amperage that would consume. And even with it, you know, heated clothes, you need to watch a little more carefully than with your voltmeters when you come to a stop and turn them off and whatnot. But otherwise, uh, it really doesn't have a problem with it. Um, yeah, it works just fine. And if eventually the uh, snow ever melts out here, I'll, I'll strap my GoPro on my chest and take it for a ride so you all can see how it performs. Also, the, uh, the headlight, just to show you, I know a few people had asked before on one of the forums, this thing is nice, pure white light. It's really nice. Uh, I'm very happy with it. And I actually think my uh, little Yamaha XS1100, I might put one of these bulbs in that thing too, just because how nice it is. Um, so yeah, it's definitely not a perfect bike. You see there's a little plastic damage here and there, you know, a few chips and whatnot. But uh, it really rides great. Uh, I love the Pacific Coast a, a lot. Um, I wish I had a chance to ride it more, but again, when they're 
is you know all that ice and you look further down there's ice there's more ice all over the place um, it's it's a risk that I don't really like taking in the winter around here in Colorado to do that um, but yeah so that's my Honda Pacific Coast 1989 with full custom fuel injection also has this cool Touareg symbol on it from uh, ADV Rider for those who like that sort of thing. It shows up when you have retro, you know, the retro reflective basically on it. So if a light hits it, then it'll, it'll fluoresce back at you, which is cool at night. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through this video, through the Facebook forum, or through the IPCRC on the Yahoo group, and I can get back to you with any questions you have. Uh, you can see it's warming up now, so... Now where it automatically starts to uh, lean out a little bit as it gets warmer. And uh, here too you can see the needles just starting to go up a little bit. Um, yeah. And it sounds good too. Thanks for watching.